Okay, we'll get started with Dodgers pitcher Lance Lynn. Uh, first question for Lance. We'll start with uh, David in the back right. Lance, you've uh, been through this before many times in your career. Being down 0-2, does it change anything for you? Uh, no, I mean, when it's all said and done, uh, when you take the ball, you try to go get outs, give your team a chance to win. Um, but you know what's on the line. You lose, you go home. So we got to come out, play better as a team, and try to win a ball game. How big of a believer are you in that, you know, being a starting pitcher, we've heard from the Dodgers about deploying 13 guys. Are you intent on, you know, going as, as deep as you possibly can without, you know, any interruption? No, I mean, in the playoffs, you they give you the ball. No matter where it's at, you take it and you go get as many outs as you can until they take it from you. Fabian and then Jack. Or Jack and Fabian, either way. Yeah, Lance, when, when you got traded over here, you kind of talked about how being back in a postseason race kind of reinvigorated. Do you have you kind of felt like this experience is kind of gone? And do you feel like you've been able to have sort of what you've expected since coming over here? Yeah. Um, you know, to just, just the opportunity to play in the playoffs is, is why you play the game. So um, I'm getting that opportunity. Um, you know, hopefully I get a chance to help the team win, uh, get back in the win column so we can uh, try to make this a series. Talked about sort of just trying to get the life back on your fastball. And you feel like you, you said you kind of had gotten it the last month or so. Like, where do you sort of feel like you kind of are with some of the adjustments that they've been looking to do with you? Uh, I'm in a good spot. So I'm looking forward to uh, showing out on the biggest stage. Lance Davis talked a couple times about, you know, with you trying to go deep into games versus empty in the tank early. Like, do you approach this start, the stakes here differently, kind of through that lens of? going as hard as you can as just as long as you can uh you know during the regular season there's different things that are needed different different starts um like i said in the postseason when they give you the ball you'll get as many outs for as long as you can and that's the only thing that matters um you know there's obviously there's no save in anything so you're just trying to make pitches make quality pitches and uh you know not let them score it's that simple how different does this park play when the roof and panels are open versus when they're not i've never seen it open do you think that'll matter tomorrow if it is open? I don't, I don't know. Does the roof open? Heard it didn't. Then the WBC was broken, right? <laughs> yeah. There we go. So I don't know. I don't know how it plays. I don't know the difference. Bill? You do have uh, pretty good career numbers here. Is there anything that you like about pitching here? Uh, I don't know, like it's, it's a good ballpark. Um, you know, the fans, uh, they're always, you know, into the game. Uh, for me, it's just the mound's got a good feel to it. So, uh, you know, when you get on a mound that you, you feel comfortable with, it's you just got to make, make pitches, execute. And out here, I've, I've done that for the most part. Kyle? Lance, we're going to be speaking with Ryan Pepio after you. And Dave made it clear that he's going to have some part in this game tomorrow. Does that change how you perceive your role, knowing that Pepio is going to have some sort of a role here? No. You look at uh, like uh, Pep and I are the only two that haven't thrown a pitch for our team yet. So we need to get some outs for the boys. And, and a follow-up question. Um, now that you've seen the first two games and those two first innings, that have obviously been devastating, and to see the approach that the Diamondbacks have taken, has that caused you to make some sort of adjustments in your game plan? No, we know what they're about. Kirsten in the back. Uh, Lance, I know we've talked just a bit about kind of the approach that you've had kind of with first coming to this team, kind of, you know, going deeper into the game, eating up innings, and then kind of the last couple of outings, just being a little bit more aggressive, really emptying the tank. Did you find just for you, kind of whether it was with mechanics or kind of your execution, was there any kind of difference in how you've kind of approached, whether it's, I guess, mindset, body, anything like that, and kind of just getting going a little bit earlier? Um, to be honest with you, there's, there's not been a whole lot of, of change. Uh, in the approach or anything like that. It's just 
Dave wanted me to know that, hey, in the postseason, we don't need you to throw 100 plus pitches and all that. We just need you to get as many quality outs as you can. So, um, you know, there's times during a regular season throughout a start where you make sure you have, you lower your pitch count, you make sure you get deeper. Um, and she just told me not to worry about that. Just keep attacking hitters and keep doing your thing and not try to make sure you have quick outs or quick innings or, or try to put the ball in play. So, you know, that's pretty obvious when it comes to this time of the year, though. So, um, you know, he just, that was something that he reiterated moving towards the uh, end of the regular season just to kind of get the mindset going in that direction, which, you know, which comes at this time of year anyway. So it was just a little, little warm up before. Any last ones for Lance? All right, thanks, Lance. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, we can start with Ryan Pepio. First question for Ryan. Start with Mike in the middle. Hey, Ryan. Uh, Emmett and Bobby took their lumps in games one and two. I'm wondering if there's anything you can draw from their experiences, uh, their first playoff experiences, that might help you with yours. Uh, obviously, first postseason uh, experience. Um, just kind of go out there and try to do your thing. Um, try not to read too much into it being a postseason game. Just go out there and do whatever you can to put up zeros and uh, give the team outs. Jack? How much have they sort of communicated to you about Dave said you're going to factor in tomorrow most likely. Do you have an idea yet of what that looks like and how do you just kind of approach going into tomorrow, what they might need? Um, I haven't really heard too much. Just kind of just told us told to be ready. I'm sure I'll probably hear a little bit more um, this afternoon or tomorrow when everything goes. Um, but just be ready. Um, I'll be ready for whatever's asked whenever. Um, kind of just take, keep the same mindset, whether it's um, starting kind of thing. I'm obviously not starting, but take the same mindset as it was a start like I have um, in the past. Kirsten, the back. Just considering how um, aggressive the Diamondbacks have been offensively, and obviously I'm sure you've kind of talked a bit about the game planning for to for tomorrow, but what have been kind of just your takeaways as to what you've been seeing from them, from the dugout, and kind of, I guess, as you prepare for your approach for tomorrow? Yeah, they've obviously been very aggressive. Um, try to use that to our advantage uh, tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> And then just landing off speed early, um, get get ahead with the fastball, whatever is kind of whatever we're seeing um, early on. Just kind of go from there. Um, just kind of let the game dictate dictate for itself. Fabian, besides just how aggressive they've been, is there anything as a staff that has surprised you about how Arizona's sort of approached you guys at the plate? Um, uh, the first game it seemed like they were kind of just on everything. Um, whatever was thrown up there didn't like from the side angle. Everything looked pretty good. Um, but they just looked like they were on everything. And yesterday, when uh, watching Bobby, it looked like they had some really good takes, um, on, especially on curveballs and sliders. Um, so just kind of go out there and try to get ahead um, and let them get themselves out. A little bit last night, just about you didn't like the pitch selection. Some of you guys did, had offensively. Is there anything Arizona is doing pitching-wise that has sort of surprised you guys' approach? Um, I, I think... Um, you know, I, I don't think that uh, Gallon did anything different. I, I think that there was a lot of pitches that we just didn't, um, you know, take advantage of. Uh, he was heavy fastball uh, for me. Um, I, I think that you look at the Merrill Kelly start, I think he threw a lot more cut fastballs into the righties or into the lefties than he had done in the past. Um, you know, as far as relievers, um, I, I don't think there was anything um, that uh, was different than what we had anticipated. Uh, it was just more of um, really being, um, you know, more selective to, you know, pitch that we can handle, which I just don't think we've uh, done as good of a job as we, we've, we've been capable of or capable of. How do you go about emphasizing that, especially today, sort of going into the rest of the series and trying to obviously stay alive in the series? Yeah, you know, I, I think that it's something that uh, our hitting guys are, are talking to our guys about. Um, you know, we, we've got our backs against the wall, um, but I still think that, you know, being mindful of just taking, you know, one at bat, one quality at bat at a time, regardless of, you know, how run how long they run their starter out there tomorrow and, and go to their bullpen or, you know, regardless of the situation, and uh, that's been something that 
we've pulled from uh, this year that's uh, been beneficial. And um, it's easy to kind of get away from that. Um, but to the re the reset part of it is, is obviously it's really crucial where we're at. And then with Lance, you talked about, especially in September, just making sure he sort of is more full throttle early on in starts. Do you feel like he's done a better job of that of late? And how much do you, how much does that sort of play into tomorrow? Just obviously knowing he has Ryan behind him. Yeah, you know, I think it's, uh, I think it's, he's pitched better with that mindset. And it's not about, you know, trying to chase velocity or overthrow or anything like that. It's just more of the mindset of, you know, you know, we don't know how long you're going to go. You've got a lot of uh, good arms behind you. And I, I do think that that, that mindset uh, is going to be benefit tomorrow. So, yeah, I don't know how long his start's going to be, um, but I feel really good about him making that start tomorrow. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Next question from Juan Toribio. Go ahead. Hey, Dave, I'm just curious. With, with the offense, like when you're in a situation like this, uh, to try and get them going. Do you consider any like lineup you know, order decisions or maybe getting guys like Chris or, or Kike who haven't got a lot of at bats in the game? Or, or do you just kind of trust the guys that you've, you've been rolling with all season? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's something I'm going to think about uh, tonight. I've thought about it today. Um, you know, there is that balance of, um, you know, looking at it, at it's, it's, it's only two games, but, um, the other part of it is, you know, that sense of urgency because this is do or die now. Um, and so I, I do love uh, the at-bats Kike has been taking and um, kind of trying to figure out if, uh, you know, changing the lineup a little bit as far as structure makes sense. But it's something I, I'm certainly contemplating and um, I'll decide ultimately tomorrow. But uh, yeah, that's a great thought. Yeah, Juan, I had thought about it. Um, and, and also, is this, like, to get the office going, is this as simple as maybe getting, like, Mookie and Freddie going? Or, like, do you need some of those other guys to kind of step up? Like, how do you see that? Like, what do you think is maybe the, the answer? You know, I, I think it's, um, I think the simple answer is getting Mookie and Freddie going. Um, you know, but there's still other guys in there that potentially that bleed into Freddie and Mookie that could open some things up for them, too. You know some situational at bats um so um I, I think it's just still it's still a collective uh team effort that has to be um for us to be sustainable you know throughout the rest of the postseason and obviously uh to win a ball game tomorrow um so i i think for me it, it's 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 everybody we all got to be accountable to uh you know being better with the team offense thanks dave yeah Next question from Juan Castillo. Go ahead. Uh, Dave, I got to ask, um, why are we doing this over Zoom? Where are you? You guys you guys are working out here. Yeah, you know what? Um, I was uh, going to stay away. Um, I was going to be there. I was there for the other workout. And uh, there was a meeting over here at the ho at the uh, hotel, so I stuck around here. And a meeting with the front office? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and I'm just wondering, is um, as field manager... Um, yeah, I know you guys talked about the last two days about, you know, the cohesion you guys have, everyone showing up to the to the, to the workout on Sunday. Um, how do you balance, you know, not being here with the team, um, your guys here uh, working no, out? Well, this, being with there's the a office. lot of guys that just wanted to stay away too, you know, and I think that for me, I, I want guys to, you know, for some people, they need to be there, they want to be there, and some guys, I think it's great that they stay away. And so that's why it's optional. And I think as much time as we spend together, you know, some guys need to be away. And uh, for me, I, I welcome that. Um, there's no, you know, cookie cutter, one way to do things. And uh, we had a lot of guys show up. I think everyone showed up on Sunday. And so today for me, um, I, I feel it's okay um, for them to be away if they need to. Thank you. Yep. Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Dave, getting back to Mookie and Freddie. Mookie, really cool off in September. Freddie was saying last night he hasn't been happy with his swing for a few weeks. How surprised are you to see them start off one for 13? Um, you know, I, I'm surprised. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, going into, um, you know, this series, I, I thought, uh, you know, Mookie swung the bat well uh, in the week before as far as the simulated games. 
I thought Freddie was swinging well, but, you know, I've talked to Freddie and he doesn't feel like his swing is great. Um, but, you know, I think it's just one of those things where, you know, it's two games and um, I understand that things are more magnified, but, you know, one game, one at bat could, could change things. And so um, for me, that's what uh, my expectation is. And, um, you know, I was joking with Freddie, uh, you know, I think it was in 21 where he had two really bad games against us. And uh, he came back in that third game with a base hit to uh, left field and another one. And and then uh, he took off. So for me, you know, it can change uh, with one at bat. And, and I expect the same thing with Mookie. Yeah, we've talked about the familiarity between these two teams. But how good a job do you think the Diamondbacks have done scouting you and putting together a game plan uh, in these first two games? They, they've done a great job. Uh, I, I can't, uh, you know, I think that, you know, as far as uh, their approach uh, to the hitting, I, I think that they were aggressive versus Clayton. Um, I, I think with Bobby, uh, same thing. You know, we have a lot of guys that, you know, fill up the strike zone. And, and with that part of it, I think that the uh, the stealing of bases, I think that that's part of who they are. And, um, you know, there's been some, some bases that they've taken um, so I think that that part of it, I think, is something that we just got to be continue to be mindful of, try to keep these guys off the base. And uh, so I think they've done a really nice job and they played good baseball. How about the pitching half of that and the, the way they've approached your lineup? I, I think, um, you know, I, I don't think uh, there's been much difference as far as on the relief side of things. I think it's been more... Um, you know, Merrill Kelly early, like I said, uh, threw a lot more cut fastballs than he ever has versus the fastball changeup, um, breaking ball mix. Um, and then with Gallon, I think there was more fastballs than we probably anticipated. We had to hit, had a chance to hit, and just really couldn't capitalize on. Um, uh, so we'll, 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 have, we'll see tomorrow. But outside of those two guys, it, it wasn't much different than we expected uh, on the pitching side. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Next question is from Jack Harris. Go ahead, Jack. Hey, Dave, with the uh, with the offense, and especially you know when you talked about expanding the zone, chasing a little bit, how much of that is a factor? Just you, I think every at bat you guys have taken, you've been down by multiple runs in the series. Is there just a level of pressing that goes on uh, when you guys are playing from behind like this? I, I think there's there's uh, some of that. I think that's fair. Um, you know, the ability um, to try to you know, minimize that feeling, that anxiety is important, but it's real. Uh, certainly when you're, uh, you know, playing an elimination game. Um, so I think there's a little bit of it when you're down six zip or down three zero to try to get it back in one swing, which we all know can happen. But um, I think just to focus on trying to put together good at bats as a team and uh, expect good results and create run scoring situations is the best way to go about it. But yeah. I mean, the reality is, is, you know, there's an extra, there's an extra, you know, anxiousness uh, in the batter's box that we've got to curtail. And with the, uh, with the bullpen, like I know those guys hadn't pitched a lot before last night, but you had to push them pretty hard. Your back end guys, are they going to be, is that something you can do again with these couple games coming up? If you need to, you know, having all of them go multiple innings last night, does that limit how much you can use them in these two games? Kind of where are they at right now? Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, you can, you, you yeah, I mean, I, I think that pushing them is, is, is a question for each guy differently. Um, I think that what we did with Joe, um, I, I wouldn't expect certainly that um, tomorrow, because um, also we have to appreciate that we still need to win three games. And so, um, you know, how do you thread that needle with all the arms uh, at our disposal is, is going to be the question. So uh, when we get there tomorrow, uh, see how guys feel on game day, and then we'll be able to kind of uh, reassess where guys are at. And then when going back to kind of what Juan was asking about the lineup changes, the, the fact that, you know, Arizona probably going to have a shorter leash with, with Fott tomorrow, does that factor in at all to kind of how you look at, you know, the lineup you throw out there, which guys you keep on the bench for pinch hitting opportunities later? Does that change when you're not facing one of their top two guys? It, it does. It, it's it's cer certainly, uh, you know, plays into my decision as far as uh, 
the lineup construction and and who's in the lineup. Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.